Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be doing my AFL Fantasy Round 10 game review of the Port Adelaide vs Melbourne game. Going through who went well, <clears throat> one particular player, and how there are some now injury concerns, some, um, I guess also there is uh, um, suspensions for a couple of players, etc. And we'll go through that and how some guys, I guess, underperformed a little bit. So before we get into the video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into the video. So as you can see here, Butters 148, and this man just keeps on annoying me. Um, the plan is to either go, um, well the plan might be actually to just go with um, Butters and uh, Wardlaw if I cannot make it to Merit. But the plan is to get merit from Powell as I need to get I need to get him I need to get Powell off and I need to get one of merit and um, or Butters as they're both uh, just really influential at the moment and Butters is uh, sort of at the point now where he is uh, just going to go large at this point. Rosie one two one absolutely huge from him including a thirteen point quarter so one oh eight outside of that is absolutely huge and yeah just sort of helped keep the gap close between uh, Butters and himself. Then you have Houston one fifteen he's actually been pretty good the last couple of weeks I'm pretty sure so if we look here Houston one fifteen eighty seven average ninety nine last three ninety eight last five. Um, I'm pretty sure that was right. And he's gone 117, 99, 84, 115. So he's there or thereabouts, but um, obviously need to just sustain this form a little bit. Uh, Drew, again, another good performance. A 53 point first quarter sort of just carried him, but another 100 from him. Burn Jones, uh, wouldn't look much into it. Horn Francis again. Wines, I thought was actually really, um, really influential, even though he only had. Um, 85 points in the end, Lysette 83, uh, Williams 82, so could look at him, but he's going to rise up massively now, Powell Pepper, Burton, Bonner, F Farrell, Finlayson, Bergman, um, and I'm pretty sure it was um, Jones here who got, Jonas who got um, suspended, I want to say, for the um, another dangerous tackle, so um, he's out, I'm pretty sure. Then you have here um, Oliver. I'm pretty sure he was getting tagged, even though he still scored 108. Tag must have fallen away in the third as he just went ballistic. Then Hunter, um, but there are some injury concerns with him, and it looks like it could be a hamstring strain. So I would say that's probably two or so weeks. If it is confirmed a hamstring strain or a hamstring tear, that's. Um, that's probably somewhere around the timeline that we're looking at at least which would basically mean if it's a hamstring and he's out it basically makes him a trade out immediately because you got that and then um he might not come back for they might just rest him until the buys and um, because of their team record and i mean who do melbourne play if we look at petrarca who do they play because they might play they've got frio a tough game tough game tough game so if he is gonna He's not going to get rested before the buys, so um, if he is um, available, he won't get rested. Hunter um, eighty eight is going to get handed a one game suspension for I believe another bad tackle, um, or was no he was the one that just floored Rosie, so he's going to get suspended. Then Petraga here started the first quarter on four and then ended up on 85, so 81 through the other quarters. He seems to be hobbling a little bit still from that knock in the end of the Gold Coast game, was it, I believe? I believe it was the Gold Coast game that they played. One second. No, it was the end of the Hawthorne game. So he's still hobbling, but, I mean, he should be back in the midfield um, next week, and full. I think he'll play full-time mid, like a 70 or 80% role if Oliver is out, and that'll be huge as I think he's going to... He'll be back to full... 100% and he'll also be able to I guess um, he'll get more time in the midfield and that will help his um, scoring as it seems like he was not only here and also in the second quarter he got stuck on the bench for 10 minutes as well so if he didn't get stuck on the bench for 10 minutes in the um, second quarter he probably would have ended up around that 9500 mark and he had three or four free kicks against as well so that could have got him he even in a bad game for Petrarca, he still has the ability to score 120 or so. 
and yes, I'm probably taking more like liberties with um, in terms of him compared to other players, but it's just the way I see Petrarca is. He has also that's not even accounting for his just he just didn't want to be there in the first couple uh, first quarter or so. Uh, quarter or two as he didn't really lay any tackles or anything and it was just pretty pretty bad so um then we move on to Stephen May 80 Rivers 77 Fritch Salem 73 where did Brayshaw end up 57 for Brayshaw wow that's thank thankfully it didn't go for him Chandler 68 so he lost cash for a lot of people and his break even will be bad Salem 73 and then uh, so he was a good return we just a decent return from him just need to see him pick it up and then Chan uh, no, we'll talk about Chandler Gorn 66 that's a worry um, so I'm gonna obviously wait a little bit longer to see his return as he was a plan to get in for um, that F6 sort of role and move another guy another forward into the midfield but uh, we'll have to wait and see Viney had a bad performance as well, so glad I didn't get him in. Uh, Neil Bullen, Van Royen, I think, don't know how he didn't get charged for just literally punching a guy in the head. Um, he seems, I think the AFL is afraid to charge him now because he just punched a guy in the like gut or head off the ball uh, late. Um, so yeah. Then McDonald, McVie, Langdon, Lever, no one else here is really important. So a very, very short um, video as you really only had Oliver and Petrarca noteworthy for Melbourne. And for Port, it was Butters and Rosie, really, and a little bit of Williams. So Williams is a good. Um, and then also, we I should probably just talk quickly about Oli Lord and uh, Evans is did what they, I thought they'd do, honestly. I thought they'd go 30s or 40s and just sort of have that consistent um, job security type of role. Um, they will have those type of games like Ferg Screen did where they do dominate a game and they get a 70 or an 80, but more than likely they'll just be 30, 40 guys. So you'll probably see them top out at around that two, uh, 300, 310k range. And um, so I wouldn't be jumping on either of them. I mean, they're owned by roughly 6% of uh, the um, fancy population. So that's basically the video there. So if we go back to the main screen, that's the video there. And I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.